Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a video. This is going to be fun. Um, we are going to look at Mike Butkus today. This dude is such a badass. This is going to be a phenomenal video. This guy is the real deal. It's struzany. It's just this. It's absolutely beautiful. Give me like five minutes to talk here really quick because people will have questions and I don't want to wreck the Mike Buckus video. So I'll have a link in the um, comment section pinned so you can skip right to it if you don't want to hear comic talk for a second. But it's important that I actually do this. So anyway, there was that big announcement about DC last night or news story that broke and uh, I didn't know anything about it. Um, all of a sudden my phone started blowing up around 7.30 West Coast time and uh, everyone was going like... Uh, you know, did you hear what happened? Blah, 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 blah. And uh, I hadn't. I, I literally was getting the news exactly like all of you. Um, I'm freelance for DC. I'm not a staff artist. Um, in fact, during the year, I have to do work not for DC um, so that legally I'm not considered a full-time employee. So, um, you know, it definitely affected some of my friends. Uh, Eddie Choi in particular is a really close friend of mine and... and uh, I consider him one of my best comic book friends. We chat all the time about art. He loves comic book art and collecting comic book art. And uh, that's just, we always send each other files and go like, did you see this? Da, 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 da. So Eddie's a great dude. Um, but, uh, you know, the next question that people were asking me is like, like, is this going to affect you? I mean, not, yes and no. No, because I already had a plan set in place, which is Blaster Kid. That's what we're working on here. That's what I'm working on. Um, I'll make a couple of clarifications because I had been vague and not totally forthcoming about a couple of things that were going on with me. So I can tell you really what was up is kind of around the end of February, March, I started to get sick and I didn't know what was up. And for really the last four months, I've been fighting something off. I actually think this will sound weird, but just go with it for a second is my, my wife's brother probably had COVID-19 very early when it was just hitting. He would work in LA and come back to San Diego and kind of like, he got very, very sick and her brother like never gets sick. And uh, we went to dinner like around March 7th or so. And right after that, man, I was fucked up. Like, like, and it just, I've been trying to beat it for months. Uh, I never went to see a doctor. I never got a test. I have a super strong immune system. So pretty much unless it's going to kill me, um, I probably could beat it on my own. I generally never get sick, honestly. <clears throat> I have a lot of allergies, but but uh, this was different. I had like a weird fever where I couldn't tell if I was hot or cold. I was exhausted. So that really fucked me up. But I didn't want to say anything on YouTube because it sounded like a lame excuse. And then on top of it, I actually, I had... <laughs> <laughs> two well three kind of really bad deadlines so i'm done with everything i finished everything about eight days ago maybe a little bit less but m my schedule was already intact i was actually talking with um leif from patreon yesterday about organizing my uh patreon videos for me because there's so many now that it's difficult for people to find what they want to look i recommend hashtags but uh i'm gonna have a master list that i provide people so that you can sort of look at the title and then figure in the hashtags and figure out like what what the video is about but um yeah was we were talking about you know my plan and i was like well in like two weeks i'm gonna make some very very serious announcements about everything and uh nothing's changed so you know i'm i'm you know i feel bad for everyone at dc but i i mean i i don't really have a future there other than inking ryan benjamin honestly like what am i gonna do i'm not gonna pencil superhero comics for them it's just not gonna happen it's not what i draw so anyway let's get into the mike butt kiss thing and you know obviously my thoughts are with everyone at dc that's been affected by this which probably is everyone and uh, let's just look at some art and do what we do here. All right, Mike Butkus, this piece is so kick-ass. Oh, and then thank you. The, there was a person that um, uh, suggested a, a, a file converter. I haven't downloaded it yet. I will. Um, I've just been busy. I was um, trying to catch up on Patreon videos and didn't have a chance to download it, but I will. But uh, um, my point being is is there's an encoding thing that Instagram does that makes it where I can't open these videos easily in uh, Photoshop. You have to resave them as a JPEG again, and then they'll open for whatever reason. But uh, I will use that converter. I'm excited to check it out because as much as I love Clip Studio, I'm a Photoshop guy. 
I was actually working in Clip Studio yesterday, funny enough. Working on Blaster Kid, believe it or not. <laughs> not not um not not finished pages. I was just I was I was goofing around with um uh, drawing some things in a very complicated perspective and uh, I wanted to grid it out to see what exactly uh, I was doing. It was it was interesting too. I'll point this out and then I'll, I will promise I'll focus on Buckus. Um, the perspective tools in Clip Studio are actually very, very nice. But uh, if you have to start doing very complicated ellipses, I found that me actually going in and, and doing this stuff manually worked better, and it was way, way more time consuming to sit with the command key and like manipulate um, ellipses. So as great as it is, I could have eyeballed that stuff um, and done it way faster. So it's interesting. There's things that the digital stuff speeds up and, and things that I think are very laggy. Blaster Kid will be all traditional, except for if it's colored. It'll be colored digitally, I believe. Um, so, yeah, Butt Kiss is the man. I love this piece. I could stare at it all day. It's so good. God dang. All right. Let's get focused, Rich. We're doing a butt kiss video. His application of graphite is absolutely phenomenal. I would assume that he maybe uses a few different lead types to create the different values. Um, there's clearly a little bit of splattered um, diluted ink on this, and there may actually even be ink on this. Uh, he's got a brush here with acrylic white, and I, I'm sure this isn't a setup photo. <laughs> If you haven't watched my other videos, you'd be like, what are you talking about? It's just the people that know, no, this is not real. He is not working right here. This is a setup shot. This will get you more likes. That's my pro tip that I give people. If you want more likes, throw your hand in it with a tool. Any tool will do. Head on a pike in. All right, let's keep going. Oh my God, this guy is so freaking good. There's another artist that does work like this, and I can't think of his name. He kind of does a lot of World of Warcraft stuff. Uh, I'm going to guess that he has a slightly larger body of work than Butkus. Um, but if anyone knows his name, I've been trying to figure it out. A friend of mine came into Wildstorm one time with this art book. But the guy's stuff is very detailed like this. It maybe it is Butkus. It was a, it was a hardcover book that was pretty big, but it was very very detailed art that kind of had this sort of vibe. These pieces are freaking amazing. Um, you know, this isn't a great scan. Hopefully we can find it. In fact, let me do this really quick. I want to see this piece bigger if he's got it, because that is really kick-ass. His Instagram has a lot of repeat images, which leads me to believe that this stuff is kind of time-consuming for him. So he may not produce a ton of work. I'm going to see if I can find that label. But yeah, these. Let's open these really quick. I, I want to see this closer. This piece is stupid good. God damn. So at times, I sometimes see a little tiny bit of photo reference in his work, but you can see how much he draws into these pieces. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful. Fake. He's not working right now. This is all an illusion. But Kiss fans are like going to murder me. No more jokes. I'll be serious. I promise for the rest of the video. Um, this is beautiful. Look at this effect that he got here. Do you see this? With the light effect and these these different shades, it's real subtle, but man, is that beautiful. And that's done with the graphite. The little white speckly stuff might be a little bit of white paint on this, but god damn, he controls his value so freaking good. It's fascinating too, because he he actually I think Travis would would try to incorporate Struzan into his stuff. I mean, he was successful with it. I'm not it sounded like I was saying in despair, like he tried and failed. Um I actually think that this guy um, brings the Struzan sort of sketchy style into his work, and it really, really uh, works well. It's really phenomenal. I don't know if this will... Yeah, okay, it's just... We'll have to go out of order in terms of... I wanted to see more of that piece, but it's all right. The figure on this thing is just insane. Really, really good. He does monster faces so great, and it's funny. You can actually see he even drew like a little tiny bit of a suggestion of like pupils in here. When you when you really get good at drawing, man, you can nail little subtle shit like this. It it will happen for you. You just really have to stick to drawing. It's incredibly important that you're com you commit to your 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 passion. 
you know it's interesting i have a friend and his son is 17 i think he's really getting into guitar like big time but it's no different than getting into art but he's obsessed with it like he plays so much he's actually hurting himself you know like he's sore from it but that kind of enthusiasm will pay off i just told him he needs to be careful i said well, lay off for a day bro all the down picking with your metallica songs is going to kill you it's the same with drawing, you know, but, but, uh, yeah, the more committed you are to it and the more that you want to learn, you will get better and better and better. Nothing will stop you if you have that approach to it. But if you procrastinate and don't draw, you'll, you just will never get better. It's just one of those things. So nice little highlight right there. He really, really is good. He controls his values so well. And it's interesting too. Let's see when we see a full piece what the core value range of the piece is. See, I mean, he might, man, this is great. I like this too, because it like, really the likenesses are quite nice, but uh, it does look drawn. This looks like a prelim almost. I could be wrong, but this is pretty, like this in particular is pretty loose. Um, he may actually spray the board with a little bit of gray before he starts because it, it looks like this is sort of like some sort of crescent art board but up here it's definitely a darker gray so he may kind of miss a grad on the page before he starts but his core color here we'll do the little eyedropper thing so i'm going to grab a brush and then just sample right here do you see where it falls in the range this photo could be a little off but do you see the the color picker right down here so here's pure white up in this corner but watch when i grab like if i grab this this will be pretty well it's close it's not actually pure white it moves down a little bit so his hottest range will be this this should be white yeah this is white but like the paper i'm trying to find what i would consider white like the white of the paper this looks close it isn't it's about a 10 to 15 percent gray even like right here is quite light but a little darker than up there this is just affected from the photo but it's interesting you know i mean to do these type of pieces it's all value travis actually told me this speaking of travis as he said if you really want to test your skills he goes try to draw on, on gray paper because you're either going lighter than it or darker than it and he said it was was when he first started doing gray paper drawings he said it would actually really tested him quite well this is beautiful guys really really fucking talented I always say talented. Talented, I think, suggests that it was like a gift by the gods. He's talented, but it was hard work that got him here. Talent will sometimes enable you to learn things quicker to some extent, but the hard work is where you're going to get these monster chops. Very, very few people ever would probably just fall ass backwards into this level of, of you know, completing drawings these are great i love these man i like this looks like it's one board uh, it's hard to say this is cropped um no these could be on individual piece of paper it's hard to say. no it looks like you might have divided a board in four these are great comps man it's interesting because sometimes when I see stuff that's this close to being complete, I would find it very, very difficult. I would want to keep so much of the stuff. Like, you know, there could be some scribble that you did where you just go like, oh, man, I have to have that in the finished piece. How do I port that over? I thought this would be fun. I, I would assume that there's definitely people that, that follow my YouTube channel that know this artist, but I think there'll be many, many people that don't know his work. I think that he is definitely one of those people that flies a little tiny bit under the radar if you're, um, you know, learning about art more. I'm sure he's got a ton of followers on Instagram. I don't remember what his number was at, but I guarantee he's would be, I mean... I see this as a thumbnail. I'd be like, oh, what is this all about? You can see he, in a, in a weird way, <clears throat> there's a parallel between this guy and like Jim Murray. Jim Murray is just a phenomenal, phenomenal draftsman, meaning that they understand how to draw and can draw well. And the level of detail and stuff like that in a weird way is kind of similar. It's also got like a little bit of that sort of 
I always refer to it as like a Bisley thing, but it's, you know, like the Frazetta Bisley. It's just very ballsy, kind of macho monster and muscle cars and motorcycles and, you know, hot girls kind of thing. I'm not saying that that's all he does, but, you know, some of his work has that, that very, like, oomph. When you start doing stuff like this, then all of a sudden you start getting compared with Bill Sienkiewicz. <laughs> it's like, that's got a little of a Sienkiewicz vibe. If you like Sienkiewicz's stuff, definitely check out, check out um, Bernie Fuchs, Baron Story, uh, Bob Peak. This is a bunch. And you'll see kind of where, where Sienkiewicz gets some of his stuff. And there's other artists, too, that um, aren't as well-known. There's a Disney artist that I love that I always use. His name is uh, Ryman. I can't think of his first name off the top of my head. Herb Ryman, maybe? Herb is great. Herb did more. Uh, he did a lot of the park design. Um, stop. What are you doing? Like, Sorry, my cat's like trying to chew on a pack of guitar strings. I love this rendering that he does. It's the Susan thing. Stop. What are you doing? You're wrecking my YouTube video. <laughs> Everyone wants to be a star these days. Stop. Seriously, cat. I'm going to kick your ass. I'll give you less kibbles. <laughs> this is really cool. That's really nice, too. Man. Uh, it's so crazy. His monsters are so cool. Fake. <laughs> It's a weird thing. I, w I would like to know who 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 was who started this bizarre trend of holding the pencil. I guess it's a size relationship. Is that what they're trying to do? It's got that's probably it. I like Dan Fraga will do those really really tiny drawings. <laughs> it was funny. I like he'll but he'll put a coin down. So I finished the thought. But um, when I was inking Dan on um. He Man and the Masters of the Multiverse thing. It was funny as is I, I people will always ask me if if uh you know, what are you working on? And it was like the people that work at the Starbucks that I go to. Um and uh I was like, Oh, I'm working on He Man and, you know, some of them knew it and they were like, Oh, it's cool and I was showing him Dan's stuff and then I was showing him how small he could draw and like his little tiny sketchbook. I think Kenneth Rokeford does that too. They do like the it's like a one inch by one inch sketchbook. And they do these like crazy detailed drawings and they're like, Oh my god, you're working on something like that? I'm like, Yeah, and he does it on big boards too, believe it or not. He cray cray. This was the last one that I opened. I think this is his most recent upload. The Adventures of Young Indiana Jones. I would have no idea that that's what this is, looking at this. Is this indie? I guess this is indie. I don't know. I've never read these books, but yeah, it's interesting. Oh, wait. Don't say what I do. Oh man, this is nice. Cool. This was the piece. Yeah, this is very, very impressive. This is a, he picked a great shot too. It's a very interesting, um, the way that he turned her in the scene. It's like, there's, a. Uh... oh, that's interesting. Look at how simple. Okay. Like, do you see the perspective on the original sketch? It's much more, um, conservative for lack of a better term. It's, it's still a nice shot where, where eye level is like right about here. You can see that, that he's going to indicate the top of the roof, but he really distorted it and actually created like a three point perspective with the final piece where you don't feel it as much in the sketch. This is interesting too. But yeah, ultimately he moved the camera down further in the shot, or at least it feels that way a little bit. But the positioning of things is just really, really interesting. He turned this into the scene and uh, really made it cool. Eye level is right about here. Right about there. Oh, that's cool. Again, perfect example of that great gray paper although like i said it looks to me like he's using white board and he sp he airbrushes on it right from the get-go well he probably does a gradation of gray i'm only guessing i don't know this for a fact but it looks like he does a gradation of gray and then a little bit of um splattery um airbrush where you put a little bit of water in it and you can hit the trigger a little different and gives it a little schmutz 
um, on the piece. But that's the that schmutz, quote unquote, rich, with your weird terminology, um, really adds very interesting things to the the flesh, to his little hat that he's wearing, his face. I mean, you can see these speckles. Just they're. I don't know if you'll be able to. I'll try to make the tool that I'm pointing like look to the left of this thing that I'm holding like there there's a speckle there's there's a speckle there's even one on the nose and here and one right here on the forehead and on the cheek and a couple on the lips but you know if you went in and did those manually it might not look as random and and our our eye and brain sort of likes we like to create patterns our mind does it automatically, but the randomness actually gives it a very, very nice sense of appeal too. This is beautiful. Again, I, I assume that he does more work than what he posts on his Instagram. I mean, of course he does. And there's probably things that he can't show um, at certain times. And some sometimes those pieces sit around for a long time before you can show them. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned in this video, but like Ryan Benjamin and I did Vampire Hunter D in 2017, finished it in like December of 2017 or maybe the first week or two of January 2018. It's still not out. Two years it's been in the can. So I have 120 pages of Vampire Hunter D that I've never been able to show. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Oh my God. Dude, like this is so fucking badass. Sorry, I try not to curse, but it's not easy for me. This is so cool looking. It's This is everything I love about art right here. This is the money right here. Show me the money. This is the money. I would buy this. Well, it probably would be very expensive. I might not be able to afford it. I would, I rarely, like people will ask me like, what art do you collect? And I'm like, I don't really collect art. You would think that I would be more into it. Most of the stuff that I like is too expensive also. That would be another one of the problems. But uh, man, like a something like this, I would actually bust out and look at just cause it's so chaotic, but so cool looking too. But yeah, that's, that's real nice. Really, really good. It's just neat, neat looking stuff. Very creative, just, it's got, all the fun stuff this is oh man goodness gracious you know in a face like this honestly he probably drew out of his mind this is not that far-fetched there's nothing that he's doing here that really is hard when and let me clarify on that this looks a little more photo referency um when you learn to draw a face this right here is pretty you know like there's there's nothing where I go, oh man, like how did he figure that out? His the nose is beautifully, beautifully rendered, but you know the dude knows how to draw. He's legit. This looks a little more like it would be maybe from a photo, and maybe both are. But um, there's an attention to detail on this that's a little more beyond that. I'll point out little things that would be my cue is a little bit of his eye sockets. This kind of nuancey stuff right here. A little bit of this right here also the this and his lips this in particular right here um, you could definitely learn that and memorize that but but things like that are you would really have to have done a lot of portraiture to, to have that like cataloged in your brain but he this guy's good enough that he could easily have done it again there's nothing really on this like you know I don't think that he would be out of his range I'm assuming this is like a movie or a TV show because I don't really watch much TV or movies, so I have no idea who these characters are. Everyone's like, Wait, how do you not know that? Hey, tools. Look at all the pencils he's got. One, two, three, four, five. So, you know, uh, I wonder if they're all different colors. That would help him keep his lead straight. Maybe this is like H. This could be a 2B. This could be a 3H. This could be... A 3B, this could be an F lead, you know, something along the lines of that. It's interesting how sharp he keeps his pencils. Some people work with them quite a bit more dull. And then here's some of his paints. Um, visually, I can't tell what kind of paint that would be. I have no idea. Acrylic, maybe. I don't know. I'd only be guessing. That's cool. Any of you airbrush? your art and if you do do you do it in your house like in your office or do you do it um like in the garage i bought a beautiful japanese airbrush 
a couple of years ago from Comic Con. I've never really had the opportunity to use it like I thought I would. Um, mainly just because it's like space. Like I can't really like. I don't think doing it in my studio inside my house would work. So it would have to be in the garage. I do have a compressor for it. Hopefully it still works. This is really cool. Man, this guy is so talented. But you can look here. Do you see his pencil lead in this this right photo? It's a little more dull. Like his, it's it's. You can see that he's been working with it for a little bit. This almost looks like he's really drawing. <laughs> this is cool. It's kind. Of, I wonder, it'd be interesting. I wonder if this dude was a Travis fan. It's got a little bit of Travis's New Horizons sort of super chaotic armor. <laughs> A biotech kind of thing. Oh, man, those pieces were so badass. This has got to be influenced by that. In fact, I'm seeing all kinds of little weird cues. The whimsical nature of some of this stuff feels a little bit like it. I assume everyone's influenced by Travis. If, if they are old enough to have been around when he was doing that work, it kind of impacted everyone. There was a ripple effect. He knows. He's like, you're right, Rich. The ripple effect. And then he starts... He starts spouting out um, equations, quantum equations. Look at the frickin' jacket or the the vest. That is so rad. Oh my god, this the, his hands are creepy. Look at that. It's like split open, and then there's this other texture inside of it. That's really bizarre. I could say something, but then this video would get flagged. But it has it has a little bit of a Giger vibe. If you know where I'm heading with that. Oh, Giger. Wow, look at this. This piece he posted a lot. It was interesting. There's so many works in progress of this particular drawing. I find it hard to believe that this guy isn't drawing all the time. To have this kind of ability, you really, really need to nurture it. Who knows? Maybe he's like a freak of nature. This was from a while ago. Honestly, though, I've seen this piece for several years. Um, but people that know Jim Murray stuff will kind of know what I'm talking about where there's a little tiny bit of a, a similarity I don't actually know I don't know where Mike Butkus is from I, I, I don't know if he's an American artist or if he's from somewhere else let's oh, find snowboarding the lead's quite sharp there but to get this deal god he draws great Well, hopefully these videos have been fun. <laughs> this is funny. I when I saw the JPEG of this. I was like, oh, man, it's actually pretty hysterical. <laughs> this is really good. I like this a lot, actually. The portrait's cool, but this is cooler. <laughs> Abe's face. He did really great job on the flesh, like the wrinkles. It's like he's got very weathered skin. The reason that it looks weathered is, do you see the chunkiness of the folds? It's, again, it kind of goes back to the material thing. You'll hear me refer to materials a lot of the time where it's like people kind of assume that I literally mean like material, like fabric. But, but materials can, I mean, in concept art can kind of mean, I mean, in my perception of it is... You know, metal, flesh, hair. I mean, they're they're hair maybe wouldn't be considered material, but yeah, this this is this looks like aged flesh. This looks like chunky flesh. This looks like weathered flesh. Um, you know, it looks dry, uh, even though it's it's got um, kind of a moist highlight on it. Um, you know, because Abe looks like he's been sunburnt many many times. You know. So he did a great job with this um, interpretation of it. And you can really see the 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 texture of the vampire's face is much thinner. Um, there's a fatty kind of almost um, sli like slimy-ish feel a little bit to the face there. Very, very different textures. So he's very good. Well, again, I'll, my blanket quote would be his materials. This is cool. Man. Yeah. Man, this is so wild. It's funny because this doesn't look like a Joe Matarera drawing, but Matarera nails stuff like this, and it has that kind of kinetic energy that, that this sort of thing has. Um, you know what's interesting, too, is... Um, 
I've done a video on Struzan in the past, and and one thing that I was slightly, slightly critical of Drew Struzan stuff was is I don't think that he's great at doing superheroes. He can do likenesses, great, but the few pieces that he's done with superheroes and superhero poses sometimes can look a little wonky. But I always do find it fascinating when um uh like more illustrators like this to me looks like a very comic book pose but you can kind of tell the people that are really into comics and the ones that just kind of go like oh okay like i need to do something comic booky and then they try to put it together um again it's not wow this is cool this actually is very very fascinating if if uh, any of you followed nick manabat stuff in one of the um cybernary books they had some of his sketches this anatomy right here looks so much like how Nick would draw monsters. Oh man, it's spot on. The head, not so much. This torso. Nick would do tons and tons of drawings of these like werewolf guys. And this right here, man, looks just like Manabat sketches. It's really interesting actually to see this. Nick was so great. He passed away from cancer at like 24 years old, something like that. It's very sad. This is awesome. It's cool. I like seeing the, the, he uses these different pencils. I use two pencils, but but uh, I always get confused of which has which lead because they're both blue. They're 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 drafting pencils like those. This is nice. Again, it's got a little like a little tiny bit of a Bisley vibe. Not not a ton. It's a splash of biz. This is cool too. So I wonder with uh, this, do you see the little bit of almost like billowy smoke in the, the background? Um, if he's shading that or how he puts that down. There's a there's a technique that sometimes these artists use. Alan Williams is another illustrator that does very, very beautiful graphite pieces. I think he dusts in powder. You can actually take graphite powder and a brush and actually apply it that way. Um, I don't know if it's considered a trick, and I've never done it, but I b became aware of it several years ago that it's a tech technique that sometimes graphite artists will use to um, apply shading without sitting with a pen you know sitting with a pencil and trying to blend stuff smoothly. If anyone like like anyone knows more about it, um, let me know. I really Alan Williams actually has a YouTube channel, and I used to follow it more regularly. But uh, I need to go back and watch some of those videos because he is really freaking good. His stuff is like you go, damn. We should do a video on Alan Williams. I'm getting so many good recommendations for videos. It's been great. So thank you everyone for uh, sharing those because I do actually acknowledge them and in fact i had already considered doing mike butkus but it was a recommendation so i will give credit to that person as that's why i'm doing this video today but i was already following him on instagram and i do love his work make mine butkus <laughs> this is cool Again, I can show my cluelessness. I, I, I'm assuming this is The Rock. I have no idea what this movie is. King Kong? But I don't remember. Was The Rock and King Kong movie? I have no clue. This ape looks like he's almost like a white ape. But it could just be the lighting on him. I don't know. Oh, man. This looks very similar to that other kid in the other piece. Is this the same? Maybe this is the... I think uh, I think it was at a different angle, right? Or no? This looks like the same thing. This is probably from photo reference. Like I said, the hand is great. God damn. Let's, let's soak in this hand. Hands are tough. You know, it's they're fun to draw, but they can be challenging. You know, it's it's how much to put down. You need to get your forms clackle crack a lack in. And um you know, it's it's a very interesting blend of suggesting things, putting in just enough information so that it reads like a hand. Less is more. I will say that, you know, don't overdraw your hands or you really are setting yourself up to have more um, visual issues with them. But, you know, what you place down has got to be on point. It's tricky, man. You know, I actually felt like I was getting pretty good with hands, and I don't know if I just got more picky about it, but all of a sudden I kind of felt like I wasn't as good. 
<laughs> I wasn't as good anymore. It's kind of a funny thing where I was like, man, I'm actually pretty good at hands. And then a couple of months went by and I'm like, uh oh, I don't feel like I'm as good at hands anymore. What happened? What? I used to do more. I would call, I call it like riffing, but you know what I mean, like exercise, like like practicing them, like on their own. I, like I'd isolate, you know, and just draw a lot of hands and wrists and forearms and hands. But I I didn't stop doing it, but just I hadn't done it as much, and maybe that affected me. Is this cool? absolutely crazy how cinematic his pieces feel just the shots in general let's kind of get this straight up and down yeah you know it's it's part of it, it's the camera angle like like he's got eye level kind of like right right about here uh, um you can kind of feel it right here but but uh, you know he, Hugh Jackman is it's like kind of an upshot it really works it really gives it like a dynamic feeling it's probably three-point perspective. It's not super, super noticeable, but I think it's somewhere up here there would be a vanish point. Probably quite a ways above a piece, but I call it the, um, uh, what, what do I call it? Like kind of a fan effect. Like you can just sort of, I'll, I'll draw it so that you can see it. Oh, wait, don't, I don't have my tablet. Pop, pop, oh, hold on, I can do it like this though. Let me just grab a pen tool. Um, let me grab a color that will show up. This is just going to be rough. I, and well, this piece won't be a great example, but you you can have a suggestion of three point perspective in your piece without really knowing the per like exactly where the vanishing point is. But this is what I'm talking about with like a fan perspective. Is everything kind of feels like it's going up to something? Now, if you ch checked all these points, they might not end at the same place. But you know, and then depending on how, uh, but go in and do stuff. I, I don't like drawing with a lot of shit on my board. I can't do grids and all that stuff. I have to just figure it out and then draw. It's, I can't have, I, I've seen pencilers that do that where they'll have literally like, looks like graph paper that would just I my eye would go nuts. This little kid, it's crazy. He's got the gnarly detail too on the costuming here. It's really really cool. This is nice too. But yeah, really beautiful Struzan feel, but it's got a nice hand drawn quality too. Yeah, see this piece. He revisits this a lot. Interesting. Oh, wow, that's cool. You can kind of see how this all built up. Oh man, that's really cool. Again, a little bit of a Jim Murray vibe. Jim crushes stuff like this. If you've seen Batman Demon, that's oh, so good. Da -na -na -na. Rah! Oh, that's nice. I remember I was grabbing files, I saw the thumbnail list and I was like, damn. It's funny that he printed out the um, what he has to draw. Beauty and the Beast, the dress becomes a rose. The bricks, very, very cool. This is great too. Damn, love it. Comic art. Is that Vin Diesel? Vin Diesel? If you kind of... Oh, I guess this is just... I guess it is comic art. This gets intense right here. <laughs> or what? I don't even know what I'm seeing. Are these just all... I guess they're all individual... Well, this feels a little sequential. I guess he superimposed other stuff on it. Maybe he never finished the story. Or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking at. Because I can't imagine that he has panels that... <laughs> This small, maybe. I'll, I'll when I watch it back, I'll be able to assimilate it more. But the classic team heading to the plane. Sometimes they're walking towards us from the vehicle that they've arrived in. 
Yeah, that looks like Vin Diesel to me. No one else, I don't notice any other likenesses, but... I don't know. I'm kind of clueless. Oh, this is interesting. Damn. Like, who does prelims like this? This shit's finished art. I'm sorry, but, like, I draw this much stuff, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> like, they'll go, we, we really like number 13. I'm like, all right, well, here, I'll just scan it for you again. I'm finished. That's all the work that I could do on this piece. How do you make this stuff better? But he does it. God dang. What? What is all this? That is nuts. Look at this shot right here in the boat. I mean, there's ones that are better, or you know what I mean, or that like I I prefer over others. Um, but uh, you know, I mean, none of them are really like like where you would just go, oh, that that's that's no good. Damn, he is cuckoo. That's cool. Like if that was a sketch cover, you'd be like, hell yeah. Wow, that's really interesting. Very cool. That's nice. Or is this Harry Potter? I mean, it's got like a little tiny bit of the Harry Potter feel. I don't, I mean, I mean it's just like a fantasy version of it. Maybe I'm way off, but... Those are cute. There's his airbrush. So interesting. So he's actually using his airbrush in his office. I'm going to have to look and see if there's an airbrush that's quiet, too, because that's the other rub, is if people are asleep in your house and you decide you're going <laughs> to fire on the airbrush at, like, 2 in the morning, you're going to wake people up unless you have a very big house. Look, she's like, oh, Rich, you're so silly. You just do it. You just do it. Who cares? If they need to sleep, they're losers. Look at that. Man, eyes are great. It's good shit. I have these pencils. Where are they? I think they're right by my feet. Let me tell I'll tell you what that pencil is and what I think it is. I, if I'm not mistaken, that is a turquoise chemi sealed. Sanford pencil. I'm trying to see if it says anything else. Sometimes they say cola race. I don't think these do. Depending on the number, I think um, would be the different lead type. Like I have one that's a 202270. That's a 5B. That's a very, very soft lead. And I have one here that's a 4H. That's the barrel turquoise. And it's a 375, but that's 4H. So, I've tried all different kinds of lead, everything from 6H all the way to like the softest stuff. It's interesting too because what I've what I personally found is my opinion and preference really can change drastically depending on when when I do it, you know. If I don't draw for a couple of months and then all of a sudden I pick up pencils and start drawing, sometimes I prefer a regular sharpened pencil over a drafting pencil. Sometimes I like a click uh, pencil. I have these really expensive um, 0.02. It's a very, very fine lead. It's called the Orenz Nero by uh, Pentel. It's a Japanese pencil. Um, I love it, but I haven't used it in a little while. I, I, thought, I thought when I actually got back on Blaster Kid, I was going to use it more, and uh, I ended up using um, I think 2H and just an H uh, drafting pencil. This is cool. So, yeah, just depends. And this is a totally different pencil. I mean, not, not the white, but these are just like Prismacolor pencils. That They are kind of waxy to me. I'm not a huge fan of them. They're, I mean, tons of people use them. These are nice. Oh, that's really cool. Look at this. Isn't that neat? What a great idea. That's very, very cool. Okay, we're getting to the end here. Hopefully, everyone had fun. Sorry if I rambled a lot in the beginning of the video. What is the crazy, crazy last 12 hours? 
I assume the craziness will continue. But yeah, honestly, I already had a plan set. I mean, the only difference is, is that, that uh, see, and that looks very Travisy too. Right? It's funny that we end in on this one, but Travis did a piece that was almost uh, not identical to this, but there's a lot of Travis in that. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, the only thing that changed is, is Ryan Benjamin and I were supposed to do something with Batman in a few weeks. And I mean, I'm assuming that it will still happen, but... Uh, you know, in a perfect world, if the Blaster Kid campaign goes well, then that's all I'm going to work on. I said yesterday to Lathe before all this shit hit the fan, what I want to do right now is I want to make videos for vi for YouTube, for Patreon, and draw Blaster Kid. That's it. If we can make that happen as a team, then we're golden, man. Blaster Kid will look like stuff like this. This is what I want to draw for you this kind of stuff so it'll be fun all right have a great day i love you all take it easy you know and uh be well and uh i'm feeling much better so don't like it for people that have stuck it out to the end of the video definitely over the last like three or four weeks i i'm getting closer and closer to being like 100 percent. each day it sort of varies but some days i'm like oh man i'm like almost back and then two days will go by and all of a sudden i'm like ah oh, shit it's kind of creeping back but but uh, it's it's getting better and better so all right have a great day i'll talk to you later bye